Hello, my name is Samuel Suresh. I'm a third year university student studying business and science at Western Sydney University. At the beginning of this year, I was given the incredible opportunity to do an internship at a medical startup company called Beyond 700. And this was as a part of a unit offered in Western Sydney University called Work Integrated Learning in Science. Um, it was a very valuable experience and I did learn a lot. However, today is not about me. Rather, it's an interview that I conducted with my mentor at the company, Thomas Miller, who was actually the CEO of Beyond 700. Um, so to make it easy for you, I've decided to break this video up into multiple questions, and I've listed those questions along with timestamps in the description of this video. So, so feel free to go down there and jump to whatever part of the video suits you. So without further ado, here is the interview. So it was presented to me as taking on a student to give them experience about what industry was about, that part of the project as it was presented to me was that the student would be given a defined project within the company which they could do and complete. My problem was that being a startup com uh, company, being a startup company, it didn't quite fit with what we were doing because it's a very flexible thing and a lot of projects were already being managed and really we didn't know what we were going to be doing the next day, let alone over a month. A project which would give a student a task which we'd already done but a really difficult task in our case being a startup we're about a medical device company and we needed to have our product approved by regulatory affairs. It's a very complex area and I thought this would give the student a real challenge in deal, dealing with a project. And so I set that challenge for the student to find out about regulatory affairs for medical devices in Europe. And at the same time, I introduced the student to different aspects of a startup company. He was invited to board meetings. Uh, he met and interviewed, in fact, some of the other main principals in the, in the company who have different roles. I think, and on reflection and without really thinking about it, one of the things was which became really evident and important was how important the culture of a company was. And our culture is our culture, but it, it was a point of discussion with the student about how important it is that you fit with the culture of the company. It has to be something, then you'll be happy. And, and companies can't afford to have people who don't fit with their culture. The other thing which was really important was to demonstrate, and this again wasn't deliberate, but something which evolved, was the difference between management within companies and leadership. And often, often there's a grey lines between them, but there are also distinctive features. And I think uh, the student got a lot from that in learning differences between leadership and management and what it meant and part of the leadership was including everyone in the company as being part of that company and really a role of a leader. There are some actual just functionality things about the importance of making sure that they turn up on time, things like that. The, the actual, in university, it's, it's often, oh, let's, doesn't really matter if I'm five minutes late for the prac class. But once you get into the environment of a business and running a business, they realise that it's actually important and it reflects on you being punctual, doing jobs which you've been assigned to do and doing that communication within the company, just how important it is. It also, I think, reflects probably what students struggle with a lot is 
how group work actually works in industry and why it's so important with different people having different roles and and how that fits in into an integrated whole. Um, I think it gives the student a sense of, of areas where their course hasn't covered at that stage and perhaps it's an area which normally they perhaps wouldn't have chosen in their next semester subjects in that area and they actually change their minds that these subjects which seem boring all of a sudden they can see the value in, in them. They, they might still be boring, but they have value to the students. So I think they think about their career in a different way, that at the end of the day, they're going to be part of a team, which is part of a company, and they need to have some understanding of areas of the company which previously weren't all that important to them. For me, it's pretty much the same role, that it's, it's a very personal thing with each student. Within the university, and I should just say that I'm actually an academic who's moved over into business and started a startup company. The opportunity to integrate with students at a personal level is really important at university, but the opportunity to do that is much more limited. And so, so you have a, you, you have the chance to find out better, and this is more my nature, what the student's weaknesses are and challenge the student through those weaknesses to enable them to grow at a much faster rate, I think. And particularly, and it applies to students at all levels and, and you can really target where they will benefit most because there is a much more personal relationship. Ah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, I think, I think that's part of it, but uh, when a student does the... Typically a student does a course in a university which comprises a number of units. They do a unit and they feel, I finished that unit, I'm moving on to the next unit, I got whatever mark I got, that's fine, I'm moving on to the next unit. And in a way, they don't go back and reflect what they've learned and what value that unit gave them. And I think one of the big advantages of Will is that they're in an environment where the, the mentor gives them challenges and then they will reflect on how they performed in those challenges and it's, 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 they're out of their comfort zone. At university there's a certain comfort zone and you can hide within the crowd. When you're in a business, no longer can you hide and so you're kind of out of your comfort zone and when you're asked to reflect, it actually makes sense to reflect on what you've learned what, you, what you're not understanding, things like that. And then that would often translate for the student thinking back on their units, particularly sometimes the mentor will say, well, what did you actually learn in such and such a unit? Did you go over this area? And as a result, the reflection process associated with learning, what else do you need? Can I help you with that? Um, so, so it's an opportunity for a student to change their behaviour as a result of that feedback. Now, we expect that in universities, but it often doesn't happen. And it seems that this will environment enables that to happen more readily. And the other really interesting thing about the platform is that it gives the students a whole spectrum of new contacts and new people to talk about and things like that. And that's really important, I think, at the end of the day when they're looking for a job. Okay, I think, I think one of the big things is that if you listen to the students, you 
get to see their world. And that's really the world of your business, is their world and your future world in the business because you are all of a sudden, it's not the world I was brought up in and not the world I had my basic training in. And to sustain a business, you have to keep up to date. And, and the students will tell you things, perhaps you don't want to hear them, but they tell you things about their world. And you need to listen to that and pay attention to that. Clearly, the modern world of electronics and it's such a vibrant, changing world, this interview, for instance. And I think that that also keeps you young and your business young and current. So there's real value in having these younger students and telling you what's current and it's real. It's not something you're reading as a new second-hand newspaper report about things. And it gives you the opportunity to ask the students to do things or help you with things which you're un unfamiliar with, perhaps like setting up a what is a good um, web uh, profile, what would appeal to them as a good web profile rather than what I might think as a good web profile. Those types of things. So I think it has really good advantages if you are prepared to listen and get feedback from the students. Personal, perhaps a, a personal thing that at my age, and not, not every businessman is, is as old as me, if you like, some are a lot younger, but it's also good to give back and help students develop and and I was fortunate enough, being an academic, to know really the limitations of what their courses gave them and to enable them to see that the education that they were getting at university within the time span which they were given it was actually very limited, even though to the student it seemed vast. Oh, there's all this information I have to learn, I have to do all these assignments. But the reality is that they need to realise that it's a much bigger world than that and, and there's an expectation that to, they, they need to learn how to deal with what amounts to massive information and new tasks all of the time. And I think their degrees on the whole set them up for that where they're expected to deal with new tasks, particularly when they get into the later years. But this just highlights the importance of that and that they can rely on other people, they can ask for help. We're often, because of the restrictions on assessment, they get a feeling, well, I can't ask for help on this. We're actually in business, that's part of the normal thing. You, you say, well, I'm not understanding this, I can get some help. I think you were totally unprepared, actually. Um, you probably had completely different expectations as to what it would be like. Um, and I'm only saying this more because my own understanding of business was very meagre. And, and you've just got no idea about the vast number of things which have to be juggled within a business and ours for various reasons was particularly difficult because it's not like making soft drinks or something like that which is pretty relatively straightforward where you're just dealing with production and government regulations and things like that. But once it's a medical device there are a whole lot of other regulations and things which you have to deal with and um, becomes quite a different beast. And ours turns out that the technology which we use in our device is military sensitive material as well and so so that's another tier above all of that and patents and legalities and there's a whole spectrum which again you you just don't know exists and so the preparation for that is a little bit um, daunting 
And when you're given a challenge, you go, oh my goodness, I just really have never heard of this before. <laughs> um, and I think, I think if people are considering having students, I think it is really important to challenge them, make them feel comfortable in that challenge, but nevertheless challenge them. Not give them easy tasks, really start to challenge them. So did you think you were prepared? You know, honestly, I don't think I was prepared for this internship at all. Um, you know, from really specific issues like regulatory affairs, legal issues, copyright, um, those sort of things pertaining to a business, all the way to you know, really big issues like you know, teamwork and working in a group. Um, it's hard to explain this, but when you're actually in the workplace, you actually have to work with other people. You're not just doing things for yourself. Um, and your actions and the things that you do impact the people around you. And I don't, I'm not sure why, but when I was in university, I don't think I really understood that when working in groups. Um, I don't think I actually took the time to reflect and think, you know, what does it mean to actually work in a group in a good way? And I think the biggest lesson I learned from my time at Beyond 700 was, it really comes down to every single individual in the team, you know, taking responsibility for the team as a whole, you know, for the team to function properly. And I guess as an extension of that, the big overarching lesson that work integrated learning taught me was reflection is so important. I think it's very easy to learn a lot of theory and knowledge from a business textbook, for example, and think that you actually know stuff. But I think it's only when you experience it in a practical way and then reflect upon that theory that you've learned um, that you're able to sort of synthesize something that's original and, and unique to you as an individual. And I think that's where real learning happens. Um, and I think the work integrated learning environment where you're just with one teacher and you're forced to look at your actions um, and reflect on them, I think that really promotes that way of thinking. And it's definitely something that I've started to integrate into my weekly learnings at university. So, so yeah, I think that's something really valuable that work integrated learning provided me that I hadn't been able to get out of my current university units and degrees. So, so yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you were able to get something useful out of that interview. Um, if you do have any questions about work integrated learning, etc., cetera, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Um, but apart from that, thank you for watching and goodbye.